If your cat is losing hair, then there are a number of different reasons why their hair could be falling out or why they're getting bold patches. So today, that's what I'm going to talk about. And then my second question is from Natalie who writes that she's got two cats who are siblings and she's been struggling with hair loss on both of them for the last year and a half. Her vet thinks that it's most likely the result of a food allergy and so she's been trying to eliminate ingredients that she thinks should be causing flare-ups such as chicken and salmon. But unfortunately after trying many different types of foods nothing really seems to be helping to clear up the hair loss problems permanently. It might seem to get a little bit better but then it will um, all come back again. Um, the hair loss seems to be mainly on... Um, um, the backs of their neck and on their ears um, but also one of the cat has uh, an area on the, her lower belly as well in between her back legs so are there any suggestions or can we provide a kind of any ideas of what could be going on so I'll just start by saying that I really share Natalie's frustration so skin conditions in cats and dogs can be incredibly frustrating to diagnose and then treat hair loss itself can be due to a number of different causes um, clearly and that can include parasites, it can include allergies and hormonal problems as well. And really a big question to help with the diagnosis of hair loss in cats to start with is, is your cat itchy um, or do they seem to be scratching or grooming more than normal or does the hair just seem to be falling out without seeing them groom, without seeing them um, scratching. And that's because hair loss due to itchy conditions, it's typically due to over grooming rather than the hair just falling out. Um, over grooming can also be uh, Due to, due, due to stress in cats, and that's something that I've discussed um, quite frequently over on rpetshealth.com. It's really common in a multi-cat household, um, even with siblings, so stress and over-grooming is definitely um, a cause of hair loss. Not necessarily here though. Now, diagnostic testing, can then be done and that can include a whole range of different things so we can take hair pluck so we can just pluck a little bit of hair look under the microscope um, and that can show us whether there's broken hair shafts which would indicate over grooming causing that hair loss I um, mean it can also pick up some mites occasionally we can take skin scrapes so we can use a little blade just to scrape the skin that's something that can generally be done conscious without any kind of problem and again we're looking for mites we can take tape prep so take um, strips of sticky tape um, and stick that to the skin and then look at that under the microscope and that looks for signs of infection um, so bacteria and yeast and things like that. Um, we can also take a culture again looking for fungal infections like ringworm um, and also bacterial infections and then we can do blood testing to look for hormonal problems and also allergy specific tests as well which are good for environmental allergies but really are useless for food allergies although it, they are tests that are available despite the fact that they really are pretty much useless. Now if you think that a food food allergy is the problem then a diet trial is the only effective way to diagnose this so like I say blood testing is really not worth the time of day if we're thinking about a food allergy certainly at this time um, at this time it may be in the future that we do get better tests for that but a diet trial really is something that we need to be doing if we think that there's a food allergy involved and what a food allergy or a food trial sorry involves is feeding a novel protein and carbohydrate source so one that your pet has never come across before has never eaten before and this can be really tough especially if your cat or your dog has eaten a varied diet to finding a, a protein or a carbohydrate source that they've never eaten before is really challenging so the other option is something called a hydrolyzed diet where the components of the diet are broken down into smaller molecules that a pet wouldn't recognize even if they'd eaten it before. So the next thing we need to know about any diet trial is that we need to stick with whatever food we've chosen for 8 to 12 weeks. That can be really difficult so nothing but this food and water must pass the lips of your cat or your dog if you're doing a diet trial in your dog for 8 to 12 weeks. Now we'll often expect a reasonable response by 8 weeks but even that's a really long time and you know it's so important that we stick to this because even um, having something after six weeks and a small mouthful of something or getting into a little bit of a leftover meal from another animal in the house for example can cause the whole diet trial to be reset so if after six weeks your pet gets hold of something else then you need to start from day dot again we need to give another eight weeks and so that can be really tricky especially if you've got a cat who's going outdoors you just don't know what they're coming across um, and so that can be really tricky to run a diet trial now to make matters even more complicated if there's little or a poor response then while it's unlikely to to be a dietary um, allergy a food allergy in some situations pets will 
really respond better to one exclusion diet over another one. So we can always try a second diet trial with a completely different food. So that's a different protein source, a different carbohydrate source, or a different uh, hydrolyzed food. So, you know, there's there's definitely challenges to running a diet trial, especially in a cat and especially in a cat who's going outdoors. Now, it's also worth mentioning that with two cats being affected, then infectious causes of this hair loss would potentially be more likely in general. So really here we're thinking of um, parasites. So, you know, fleas, mites, certainly um, ringworm, that kind of thing. But then also allergies do have a genetic and hereditary component. So certainly in the case of these two cats, which are related, um, which are siblings, we can certainly think of allergic skin disease and food allergies as a potential cause of hair loss in these cats. You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to DrAlexAnswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.